I'm back here with my brothers, man. These are my guys. I love these brothers to life. The Pastor Monty with Ryan Goss and Kendrick Bell. And these are our leaders of Love Church's Huddle Men's Ministry. We're hosting a wonderful event Saturday, September 10th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. call Man Camp. Now, we were talking to you guys before about your background and, and how in education, what got you excited about this idea of Man Camp. I want to go all the way back now. I want to go to Portsmouth, uh, Virginia. I want to go to Rockford, Illinois. I bring introduce our audience to little Ryan and <laughs> little Kendrick. And tell me about growing up in Portsmouth, Ryan, Virginia. Growing up there, who were your influences? What did you learn from men, and how were they influencing you growing up? Well, you know, the first thing I would say is, um, you know, I had... I was raised in a home with my father there, and um, I had uncles. Like, like where I grew up, I, I lived on the street. It's like my house was here, my aunt house was across the street, and behind them was the other. We were like all in one, you know, tight knit community right there. So I really had, you know, a couple of men that I saw all the time and kind of, you know, looked up to. And the thing that I think I learned the most coming up was they all were like super, super hard workers. Like they mm. always were working. Like. My dad, sometimes my dad would have two and three jobs. And so, you know, that's one thing that coming up that I took and I think is still with me to this day is that, you know, work hard. I'm just trying to find a way to work smarter now. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. You know, work hard, but work smarter. But um, mm -hmm. and, and it, one thing I will say, though, is that um, even though those men were there, I think they worked so much that, you know, the thing that was missing, though, sometimes is that time when you're there just to, you know, pour into your uh, son things like, you know, their confidence and just communicating, you know, communicating mm. with them the time there. So that's something that I took away that, yeah, you want to work hard, but you got to take the time just to sit still and, you know, communicate with your, with your child, especially young men, you know, you get that confidence and just that ability to talk back and forth with your dad. So, but hard work definitely is something I saw in all my uncles and then my dad and, um, it's, it's stuck with me to this to, to, to today. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take us back to Rockford. I'm yeah, going. yeah. Little well, I'm going to take you a little bit further back. Uh, I'm originally from Rochester, New York, and I moved to Rockford when I was about 14 or 15 uh, years old. But I just remember those young years of having the total opposite, just that mm -hmm. lack of that male figure and that male guidance in the home and and so in that case, our home, it really lacked a lot of stability. Uh, and I really feel that the man brings that emotional stability uh, to the family uh, when it comes to, you know, keeping everything balanced. And um, so, but I had a great mother, you know, she raised me, uh, raised me and, and five other boys and, um, and she did a great job. Uh, but, you know, you still notice, you know, even later on in life, uh, some of the, the, the spots that, I lacked in, you know, that I had to go back and find in other men. So five other boys. Where do you sit? Um, I am the fifth son. So okay. uh, and I'm a twin. And and so uh, but yeah, growing up in Rockford, though, Rockford uh, was where I did find a male role model in that moment. And uh, and he basically took baby steps with me you know um like i said i wasn't even emotionally sound as a young teen you know growing up but he was patient and uh yeah when this when now it, when this when this young man came into your life mm -hmm. because i think this is going to be very pertinent to man count mm -hmm. what did he do to to really earn your trust mm -hmm. what was some of the things if you can re remember was he patient with you or something? Yeah, different? I think the patience uh, and, and, and being able to uh, open up and kind of have conversations with me in a non-judgmental way, uh, being able to validate a lot of my feelings that I've had, you know, uh, that was really big for me, you know. The, the, the so it wasn't none of this, uh, man up. It right, was, you know, right. Because sometimes right. if, if you, we got to be careful, we're not, we're, trying to, we're not trying to bring the kids here to bully them. Be a man. Yeah. No, it's being patient, understanding. Yes, you know, you yes, know, so. yes, yes. That was a yeah. big, big, big thing for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Ryan, man, I, I, you know, guys, as pastor, one of the things that's been a, a blessing for my career is I get a chance to go to military promotions and retirements. Mm. And so to be at your retirement 
And, you know, and, they, and it is, it's a beautiful ceremony. I like going to them. Yeah. And it's a beautiful ceremony where, you know, and they get to read where you come from and everything. And I remember, well, I, I remember two things. I remember about that day about how, because every time you talk about your relationship with your wife, you get choked up and how y'all just like, <laughs> you know, I, I made me want to step my game. I'm like, man, I got to start doing like my wife. You know, they, been, <laughs> they been the pictures up. They've been all over the world. Yeah. But the other thing I remember is talking about, uh, the decision to go into the middle. So my dad came home and he saw me you know, just doing some things that I shouldn't have. I'll just tell you the story real quick. I had a little beeper and my beeper went off and I was like, you know, I'm about to go hit, you know, hit the street. And he was like, oh no, 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 no. And he said, let's go. And he put me in the car and we went down to the recruiter. Now I had already kind of spoke to him about possibly going in the military. I had a friend in the military as well and I had already took the test. So it was just like kind of, Am I going to go or not? He just snatched me up. He said, let's go. You need to go now. And mm -hmm. he, I thank God that, you know, he did that. Because when I went there, I was going to go in the Army. This will happen when I went there. I, the Army guy wasn't there. The recruiter, the Air Force guy was there. He told me, that's how the Army's going to be. They're never going to be there for you. That's their little line. He got, and he was like, and I was like, yeah, okay. And he, and he uh, said, look, and the only thing I wanted to know was, do I got to take that test again? Because I don't want to. He was like, no, you don't have to take the test. Got to use. I said, well, sign me up. I'm, I'm out of here. And um, probably a month later, um, I was gone. You know, I was out of there. And I, I had no fear of leaving. I just knew that at that point, I wanted to do something different. By the time I had went to basic training and came back home. True story, two of my friends had already been incarcerated. Wow. One had already been shot. From basic training. They, I, so, well, basic training is six weeks. So I say I went to basic training, what they call tech school, mm -hmm. which my tech school was, I want to say at the time, maybe two months long. Okay. So I think I left in September, I came home for Christmas break. By then, already wow. I had two friends that were incarcerated that I hung out with every day. So. I just think to myself, where would I have been? I would have been right there with him. One, two in prison, one shot. Wow. Where does that leave me? Yeah. And mm. and they all, even to this day, <clears throat> I still talk to him. And one served 10 years consecutively, but we talk all the time. He said, man, I always think I should have went in the military mm -hmm. with you. And But my dad, they didn't have dads. My dad mm -hmm. saw that I was on that path. And he, you know, his decision to say, you got to go now. It's really what, you know, I say saved my life. You know, Kendrick mm -hmm. talks about a young man that comes into his life to really mentor him and teach him mm -hmm. the things that you needed to know. Brian, you know, military and that discipline. One of the things that by the time, you know, of course, many years later, in fact, you're at the end of your career by the time, you know, I'm blessed to have you in my life. But I just noticed a man of discipline, a man that was well put together. Mm -hmm. And, and just, you know, sharp. And, and I'm sure these are the skills that you receive from your illustrious military career. It is. The military, <clears throat> I say, if a young man is not going to go to college, go in the military. You learn so much about yourself, self-discipline, because it really takes, I mean, because the military, yeah, they teach you discipline, but you, you know, you can still go in there and make the same bad decisions. You really have to, you know, have self-discipline. And mm -hmm. I, I learned a lot of self-discipline. And the work ethic that I already had from home, mm -hmm. and I mixed that with the self-discipline, it really, you know, made my career one that, you know, I have no regrets. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed my 21 years I did in the Air Force, and I can't think of a time where I regret any of it. You know, it really made me who I am today. It was, and both of you guys, there was a, I, I, for me, what I'm hearing is just a level of structure that was put there. Mm -hmm. And introduced to you. You were able for you were able to combine it with the things you had already known. You were able to now open up your heart mm -hmm. to trust somebody mm -hmm. to help give you those things. And this is why for me, band camp is so important. Man camp, you may not have someone who, you know, you, I think you just gave them a nugget. And I, and mm -hmm. I hope you guys are watching. If they're not going to go to college, maybe you're going to have to be like Ryan's dad, get in the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they'll they'll thank you for it twenty four years mm -hmm. later. No mm -hmm. doubt, <laughs> you know, right. you know. Mm -hmm. But but you guys both have that instilled in you things that you didn't learn mm -hmm. in different avenues. Whether it was a village and then the military and it, and got a king. I think man camp is going to do that for these young men and boys to 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 teach them and and even show them even for that one day. Yeah, that one day yeah. for eight hours. 
to show them that there's another alternative. 